Hi, good evening. Hi. I'm Elaine, and I'd like to welcome you to the Coracle Live Books, Bards, and Ballads. Coracle is the online, ongoing educational platform of the Sisterhood of Avalon. And this evening, we're going to be chatting with one of our sisters, Beth Hansen, who is an artist, a jewelry maker, a Reiki master, an intuitive reader, and a fairy seer, which I'm really interested in hearing about. Um, if anybody has questions, you can pop them in the chat, and I will make sure that they get to Beth uh, for her to answer. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Beth Hansen. Hi, Beth. Hi, Morgane. It, I'm so happy to be here. I'm so excited to connect with my sisters and anybody else who, um, you know, finds value with what the Sisterhood of Avalon has to offer with the Coracle Live. Um, I watched uh, part of the uh, interview with um, Anuin um, mm -hmm. Avalon. So, um, that was fun and uh, I realized, oh yeah, I would like to do that. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm basically here to talk a lot about my artist journey. Um, so uh, it really, I've been an artist my whole life and I'm 55 years young right now. The past five years, my art uh, changed. I actually had set aside painting for about a decade and I spent my creative time um, taking belly dancing classes and playing instruments and enjoying music. Um, but I kind of burned out on doing art because I did attempt to do it professionally in the early 2000s and ended up having to go back and get a corporate job but uh, five years ago, I dedicated myself to painting images of uh, the goddess in aspects of nature. So rather than um, cultural goddesses, um, I'm really concentrating on finding the divine feminine within anything to do with nature. I've got 19 images so far. Um, I've got a goal of hitting 100. Um, and uh, like I said, I, I really had started about, well, five, almost six years ago, I started painting, but it was five years ago that I decided to, um, you know, take it public because at first I didn't know, I thought maybe it was just for myself and for my own spiritual journey that I was exploring this. And then I kept getting idea after idea after idea. And, uh, uh, in 2017, I uh, made the leap and uh, founded Beth Hansen Art LLC. And uh, about, I think it was a year later, uh, I, uh, I launched my website, uh, HarmonyGoddess.com. Um, so, like I said, it started with the goddess and... Um, I went from being an oil painter to painting in watercolor. Do you have There's any of um, the uh, goddess paintings that you could show us? Here is the uh, sun goddess, and next to, on the other side, we've got the moon goddess. The sun goddess was my very first painting, my very first um, finished painting in, in quite a long time. Um, and uh, I can get up and grab it if you want me to bring it closer. Um, that would be lovely. Okay. I'm sure everybody would love to see it. Yeah. So it's just a little five by seven painting. And um, the outline was actually done in colored pencil and then and filled in with a little bit of watercolor and uh i was just really exploring the medium and also um really exploring how i relate to the goddess and um 
what she means to me. And I'm not sure why I started with a sun goddess, but I did. <laughs> And the funny thing is, uh, when I was painting it, I, I was painting it in the mornings and I had it on my artist table and um, I actually spilled coffee on it. <laughs> so I had to mop the coffee. The surface that I paint on is, act this is actually what's called clayboard. So it's got a rigid backing that's um, sort of like a particle board. And then they put uh, thin coatings of uh pure white kale and clay over the surface of it. So you can um, scratch away things and, and bring the white back out. And you can scrub things away a little bit too. I didn't get all the coffee out, but I got most of it out. And you know, who doesn't need a little coffee for the mornings, right? So now, that- are these, are these the paintings? Now I've seen some of the necklaces, the goddess necklaces yes. that you mm -hmm. have. That donated to the auction so you just do yeah that so basically um i just uh, take the images from the paintings and shrink them down into mini prints and then i retouch them with a little glitter maybe some gel pen to make them shine this one here that i'm wearing today is the river goddess so she sort of uh goes with the flow try and put it in a way where you're not seeing the the ring light all in the way but um so helping me to go with the flow today uh so that like i said i painted these in um 2016 so well, here's where the dramatic hold on i'm gonna put this back because i'm gonna talk we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get into a, a next conversation here about life happens life yes. happens a lot to me so i started these paintings in the spring of 2016 uh following actually uh going to paganicon which is a local uh pagan convention where lots of people show up and there was a wonderful ritual and it really helped heal me when where it comes to my art and that's why i started picking up the brush again so, um, like I said, I'd been spending a lot of time with music and I had also uh, joined a band with my brother. And uh, that was the first year we were going to be performing at the Renaissance Festival. Uh, it was called the Leprechaun Pirates. I play ukulele and we sing a lot of Irish songs and uh, some songs we've written. And uh, so uh, it was that fall during the Renaissance Festival run that I went ahead and um you know you gotta take care of yourself so I, I i went to the doctor did the regular exams all the girly bits and um they found something and that's when i found out i had breast cancer so right after i started this artist journey all of a sudden breast cancer hits and uh with the help of my sister who uh, I, I ended up leaving my husband also because that had been coming to a close after 10 years. Um, we just weren't a good fit anymore and it was time for me to leave. And so I moved in with my sister who was a breast cancer survivor at the time. And uh, it was when I was living with her, um, she did a, uh, she'd been doing wire wrapping for years and she was like, Oh, you should watch these videos with me because when, what happened when I was on chemo, I ended up having to be, um, on a uh, short term disability because I, I couldn't work because I couldn't wear my glasses because my eyesight had changed. And, um, but there was this big screen, you know, the, the really big screen TV in the living room at my sister's and um she got the youtubes up there and she started showing me all these wonderful videos and so i i i got to feed my artist self even if i couldn't do the work because i couldn't read i certainly couldn't do any any detailed painting I, there wasn't space for me to set up my paintings there anyway um but yeah she started me on that journey with the wire 
And I tried a few things at the time, but um, so this is one of my earliest wire wrap. And this is a, um, the stone is a uh, rose quartz. And so uh, this is sort of like, wow, I did a thing. And I was so excited when I, when I told Jane about it. It was actually after I had moved out into my apartment that following spring that I toyed around with the wire wrapping. And um, I ended up uh, learning uh, more about polymer clay because, you know, I, I didn't want to be like, we're twins, okay? You don't want to be like your twin. <laughs> you know, like, I knew I wanted to make jewelry out of my paintings. And I knew that, you know, I could learn how to wire wrap these, but then I found an easier way with, with just getting a, a pre-made bezel and and uh, a little glass cabochon to uh, cover it and able to make them that way. But um, I also got into polymer clay. And with the polymer clay, you know, that was my thing. And so, uh, even when I was living there, I did. I started doing the polymer clay thing, and um, I watched all the videos ever, all the YouTube videos I could find on that. And uh, so, a lot of my uh, earlier work, in addition to this, I also did some with um, some polymer clay. And I have an example of that as well. So I'm going to be jumping up again. <laughs> if that's okay. Uh, we're all friends here. You're just visiting me in my studio right now. So this is an example of what I um, created with polymer clay. And okay, that sounds curious. I'm not exactly sure what polymer clay is. Uh, Sculpey is uh, it's it's a oven baked clay, and it oh, comes in okay. multiple colors. Okay. So Sculpey is clay, and so I created this around for it with that and here we've got some celtic knotwork so this is the uh fairy of insight and this is fairy of the green and so it's it's a wonderful medium oh. for jewelry making and so i have a lot of fun with that um but they, they tend to be rather more like substantial pieces and not everybody likes substantial pieces yeah. so as as that as that process continued um over time i started to learn a little bit more about using wire in my jewelry and i did some beaded pieces um and uh some of which i donated to the auction to support the sisterhood and uh then what really was the turning point for me for the art was um, last year, my sister passed away. And so I got all of the um, stones and wires and everything she used to make wire wrapping. And I started making wire wrapping for um, the eye in Minneapolis because Jane had been, um, their creator for for that sort of thing for decades so um here's the type of thing that um you know she had this is a, a beautiful beautiful pendant that she created and i can't get it to be in focus very well i don't know if i maybe put it next to my face <laughs> that's, beautiful. But, that's beautiful yeah it's got swirls and um and here's another example of her work um this is a uh, a wonderful piece and um so i sort of had samples of her work to go by and i went back to youtube and searched all the things that i'd watched um basically four years ago um and learned more about the wire wrapping and it was how i dealt with my grief i would sit down with the stones and i would do more and more of, 
of that. And then I thought, well, I don't know how these are going to do if, you know, we said, okay, we'll put them on consignment through the eye and um, see if people like them. And, you know, as somebody who struggled so hard previously to make a living as an artist, as a painter, um, and I had no idea, you know, and, and I thought she was exaggerating when she said she'd made thousands of these over the years and they all sold. And I'm like, what? <laughs> thousands? Oh, she must be exaggerating. As no, <laughs> because I've made a couple hundred over the past uh, year or so and they've all sold. Um, mostly um, from simpler ones from tumbled stones uh, such as this. This one is uh, a silver and this is an amethyst stone. And uh, so, so it's, you know, it's a little bit more organic and um, really fun to work in this medium. Um, as I work with the stones, um, because I'm a Reiki master, I'm always thinking about, okay, what's the properties of this stone? And I, you know, just channel Reiki into the stones as I work with them. And so everything comes out charged with Reiki. I became a Reiki master in 2008. Uh, actually, that was pretty much at the end of my art career uh, to help deal with the stress of having to go back to a day job and I wanted to find a more holistic way of dealing with the depression of being a failed artist. But never say never. <laughs> I set down the paintbrushes and yet here I am painting and making jewelry and finding a way to connect my spirituality with all of this. So, um, yeah, I think over time, I don't know. I don't know if I would say you were a failed artist because you did do it. So you didn't fail. You were I did do it. No, yeah, I just wasn't able to support myself as an artist. Yeah, I wasn't able to. I, I I did a lot of work, and a lot of people bought my stuff, and I even had a booth in the Renaissance Festival back then. Um, but it was during the recession. And people weren't buying what I had called fantasy art at the time because I was doing, you know, more um, a lot of fairies and other uh, fantasy ideas and mm -hmm. scenes. And what became when I went back to the art, it was more come through spirit in a sacred manner. I was already already, you know, because I was connecting with with fairies and I had. Um, things coming through when I would paint of, you know, you know, I would, I would do a, you know, design and I'm like, okay, this is, this is a, this is a green fairy. And then once the painting was completed, I had a friend who said, oh, you painted the Indian goddess Tara as a fairy. And I'm like, what? And then he showed me pictures of her and it looked just like her only with wings. And it was like, whoa. But the thing is, when I was painting her, I had this sensation of her looking back at me. And I said, who are you? What's your name? And she said her name was Tara while I was painting it. So I called her Tara the Earth Fairy, not knowing that there was a Hindu goddess. Yes. With the same name and with the, the same hair and so that's when i realized that the art i was doing was more spiritual and when i went back to it it had to come from a place of spirit and from my understanding of exploring the spiritual world and exploring the natural world um because being human on this planet and also recognizing and honoring the sacred feminine um, in a world where women have, you know, if you're young and beautiful, you're a commodity. If you're old, you're forgotten. And yes. I've met so many extraordinary, extraordinary women um, through the, the sisterhood and through life and through, um, you know, working at a metaphysical store. I'm so, so blessed. I feel so incredibly blessed to be doing the work I'm doing now 
and being able to have my whole life be about about spirit and creating art and doing readings and um, being able to share my creations with people and have them blessed by it and you know get the Etsy shop up and then they'll say oh it was amazing when I got it home it gave so much energy and I'm like wow that's really cool and you know people buying my my things for gifts for people is is such a blessing as well um so uh so yeah i've been through cancer myself the death of my twin sister and um knowing that she is you know checking in with me every once in a while is helpful um but it's been a really, really tough year. And being able to work with this craft was a way I could connect with her in a big way. And uh, so this year has been, in 2021 was the year of no paintings. Um, but uh, 2022 is going to be different because I have ideas starting to come to the forefront. And now that I'm getting into a rhythm with, you know, what's needed at the store for my jewelry and what do I need to produce for shows coming up. I can start really enjoying uh, exploring nature again and the goddess in nature. Um, so, wow, I've been rambling on for a long, long time, Morgan. <laughs> do you have any questions? I was just um, Do you feel that your sister is with you when you're doing yes. jewelry? Definitely. So she, um, she's with there are times, there's times when she has been present when I've been do, and I I was doing Reiki for somebody um, at the store and I really felt her presence and I'm like well and and she basically said you you need to tell this person that I'm here and then I did and then she said the biggest thing that she came there for for the Reiki was. She, her mom had passed and she was having trouble dealing with the grief, which she didn't share in the beginning because she didn't feel comfortable enough because I shared what I was going through. Um, so yeah, she's definitely with me in the first few months. Um, oh, please ask Beth to name her Etsy store again. Harmony Goddess is my Etsy store. I also have a website, harmonygoddess.com. Um, and that uh, has all my artwork on it, or most of my artwork on it. Um, very little of the jewelry, the new jewelry I've been doing for the past um, nine months or so, um, has uh, gotten on online because, like I said, it's been selling through the store. <laughs> so, so it's like there's there just hasn't been a chance to list anything, and uh, it's it's kept me pretty busy. Um, so I, I do want to also share, you know, I already showed you, you know, the beginning of my journey with the wire wraps and where I am today, literally, um, this is a beautiful Labradorite piece I did yesterday, uh, wrapped in cup. That's beautiful. I still have to antique it. I am going to put it in a a liver or sulfur bath and then polish up the highlights because they do look copper looks beautiful once it's been antiqued and below it i've got a soda light piece that i did a little bit more of a freeform wrap on um experimenting with uh different types of wire that's the other thing that's so exciting is there's always something to learn with wire wrapping and um as i work with it you know i just get more and more ideas I am like, how, how can I just sit down and it still comforts me. And it's, I, I'm, like I said, I'm 55 years old. I have an es essential tremor and I have arthritis, um, uh, mainly in my thumbs. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, I mean, the thing, the thing with arthritis, you have to keep using your hands. You have to, you have to make sure you're using your hands in different ways, you know, uh, Morgan and I talked about our past lives as belly dancers uh, as we were set up here. And so, you know, I'll do 
my flourishes to to help you know stretch my hands out yeah. so that way i uh i can you know keep keep things lubricated in there oh so jenna she says she has one of your pieces the earth goddess and she gets lots of uh, compliments on it but she's actually putting the link in so everybody can see it oh awesome the the yeah the the, the tree goddess yeah um that was I, I initially, there was like my first collection of nature goddess paintings was a total of 10 of them. And that was one of the first 10 that I did in um, 2016 and then finishing up in uh, 2017 after I'd gone through chemo and <laughs> got better <laughs> and, and was able to do stuff again. So yeah, thank you, Jenna. Um, I, I love the tree goddess and I love working. I loved painting that one. It was just so interesting and so fun because I really wanted to do that, that Yoni shape of, you know, a very feminine shape within the tree. And then um, reading uh, more about um, the, oh, what is it? it I'm not Catholic, so I don't know the different Mother Marys, but there's one version of Mother Mary where it literally is that shape around her and there's like rays going out. And at the bottom, there's like a little flower and it's like, oh yeah, a vagina. So <laughs> I was like, yes, this is what this is about. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. And it's like, yes, the goddess lived through all this and realized that, yes, there have been people finding a way to the sacred feminine, however they had to find it. So, Lady of Guadalupe. Yes, that's it. That's it. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, that That is something that... Uh, you know, helped inspire that piece um, as well. Uh, and, you know, finding different different ways of understanding nature and spending some time in nature, which is, you know, I'm in Minnesota, so right now spending time in nature is um, going outside for, you know, 10 seconds at a time because, you know, as we started this, we, we checked our temperatures here and, you know, it's February 4th and it's five degrees outside. And <laughs> so it's and like, so you have, I'm, so. <laughs> I, I'm not a snow bunny. I, I may be, I'm of good Finnish and Norwegian stock, born and raised in Minnesota. But no, I never took to skiing. I never took to much in the way of outdoor activities. I took to sitting by the fire and reading books is what I took to. This is this is what yeah, we did before. So yeah. So, so there um, are a couple um, things um, before we had started with we chatting, and you had touched on one of them earlier that you do your, you know, you pull in Reiki when you're doing mm -hmm. your art. Mm -hmm. So could you explain, I mean, I'm a Reiki master as well, but would you explain that process? Sure. So um, just briefly, what Reiki is, is uh, a way of channeling energy um, through your body. You're not using the energy from your body, but you're channeling it from a universal source. And it was founded by uh, Usui Mikau and in the late 1900s, uh, 1800s, and um, in Japan. And it's been brought to the West. Uh, and it's uh, just a simple laying on of hands. And so anything you make with your hands, anything you can put that intention to, you can imbue with Reiki. It's very much like doing magic um, for those who do energy type of magic. And so all of my pendants are charged with it. 
And I even charge my prints before I um, send them out. Uh, I have a, a spot in my studio that I call my charging station. And that's where I charge the artwork. And I charge it with Reiki. And I also say a prayer to the goddess to um, bring blessings to whoever receives it. Um, and uh, so it's it's all done in a sacred manner and uh it helps keep me on track because people are always asking oh did you do a ritual for the full moon i'm like no i kind of do ritual every time i sell art i <laughs> so uh so no, I've done, I've done, it's, it's been a while since i've done a little full moon ritual and i i'd like to get back to that as well but um I'm certainly aware of what's going on, uh, but the Reiki is something I do all the time, every day, and I, you know, do Reiki for clients uh, every week at, at Eye of Horus, as well as readings. Um, I've been working with the Tarot for, since 1995, and uh, I picked up the Fairies Oracle deck by, with artwork by Brian Froud, uh, when it came out in, I think, around 2005. And uh, um, uh, Tracy, who's the owner of the Eye Metaphysical, is the one who encouraged me to um, start offering fairy readings to clients because it was more of a personal thing. Like I said, it's like, I, I don't know if they want that. So I give people the choice. Do you want to have a fairy reading or do you want to have a tarot reading? And sometimes I combine them. Um, but I'm totally even forgot what the question was. So I hope I answered it. It was about Reiki. Oh, I use it in my work. Yeah. So. Well, I'm going to segue into the fact that we discussed that you're a fairy seer. So that uh -huh. is a, a good opening for that. You know, when you do the fairy readings and when you. Yeah. So how it really started was, um, at the time, I was really dedicating myself to um, my artwork in the late 1990s. Um, like I said, I'd started, you know, reading the Tarot in 1995, um, and I started doing a lot more painting. And I thought, oh, you know, I like fantasy art. I love story. I love of researching and I love fairy tales and I thought of oh Midsummer Night's Dream why don't I do Titania and Oberon and so I sat down and you know I had taken photos of friends to pose for me sat down and sketched out Titania and I remember starting it by just doing the circle and like doing a cross okay here's where the eyes go here's the angle of the face and I lost time. I saw a face looking up at me that wasn't, a, you know, was not a portrait of the person who posed for me. It was the same pose, but I realized that something came through at that point. Um, and, uh, and that's when I was really starting to explore the pagan path as well. And I realized, okay, there's something to this. And so there's always been a sense of, um, in the sisterhood, it's called Imram, where you do this, this spiritual journey to Avalon. And I've done, I had worked with somebody who taught me how to use energy, how to raise energy long, long before I ever took Reiki in the 2000s or even heard of it. And, um, she sort of said, this is what we're going to do today. We're going to do, try and do a shamanic journey so you can meet your spirit guide. And, you know, she had a tape recording of the drumming. I went to fairy. I came up and she said, no, 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 you, you didn't go to the fairy. <laughs> you're in, you're in the, sh you're in the shamanic underworld or whatever it was like, nope, that's not where I went. I went to fairy. It happens. It happens. The fairies called me. And so, you know, fairies kept creeping into my artwork more and more and more. And, you know, there was this great boom of fairy art 
right about the time that I was a professional and other people's careers took off and they were able to, you know, pay off their houses and do all sorts of wonderful things and I wasn't and that's when my, my world was shattered and, and I gave up art for a while because I was comparing myself with others. No, I'm not. I do me. I'm a Gemini. I do, so I've always worked with the Fae and I, I have five spirit guides, three of which are fairy. When my Reiki master came through as a high elf, similar to Tolkien elves, my, my, my Reiki guide, because in, in Reiki level two, you connect with your Reiki spirit, spiritual guide and with the other side that was part of my Reiki training. And I, I looked at my Reiki master, um, why does he look like an elf? And she said, what did you expect? Because <laughs> I'm already doing the fairy paintings and it's like, what did you expect? And that's how that happened. Um, I, was I was actually interviewed, I think around 2000 and, was it 2005, 2006 for Fate Magazine. Um, they did a cover of one of my paintings and uh, I was interviewed as painter to the fairy court because that's how I felt that, you know, I was, I was doing that work. So <clears throat> in a perfect world, I would never have to sleep because then I could do goddess painting and fairy painting and, and, and all the jewelry and all the readings. And by the way, I am a Gemini, sun, moon, and Mars. So there's a lot of me needing to create and different roles that I need to take on to be happy. And I finally found my path, which is this, this smorgasbord of spiritual stuff. But, you know, the one common denominator is me. <laughs> so that's how that works. Um, also, I wanted to mention, because um, Morgane, you said, uh, you know, wouldn't it be great if you could demonstrate doing wire wrapping? I'm like, no, I can't. I can't talk and wrap at the same time. And obviously, with the camera, it's too difficult. Oh, I want to show off this one. I haven't shown this one yet. I showed it to you during the preamble. But yes, I so this is my fancy how light piece that I made for myself because I've been making so many for other people. So this is my first attempt at doing uh, a serious wire weaving. And this is in silver plated copper. And then that's the back. Got some swirls down here to keep it from falling out. And uh, so this was like, you know, a couple hours worth of work. Um, usually, you know, the simpler pendants like, um, you know, for those who are interested in the craft, um, like this, this is a uh, dragonstone, which is a type of bloodstone. Um, this takes me up anywhere from usually about 15 to 20 minutes to complete. And believe it or not, it takes about two feet of wire, of uh, which very little gets trimmed off in order to do this because you got to wrap the bale and twist all the wires together. And yeah. This little thing takes about two feet of wire. Um, and um, I wanted to mention some of my favorite YouTubers. So if anybody wants to get into wire wrapping, thinks it might be fun playing with stones and playing with wire, um, I highly, highly recommend Yvonne Williams. Um, so you can search for her on YouTube. She's one of the biggest crafting YouTubers out there. And she does long detailed, um, things with wire wrapping, polymer clay. She's done leather working, costuming. She's a full-time YouTuber slash crafter. And she is, uh, her business is called Back to Earth Creations. So, um, I believe it's back to earthcreations.com. Um, you can you can find out more about her and she also sells craft kits and offers um, but she has a ton like hundreds of free videos on all kinds of crafting but um, she's been wire wrapping for I believe about 12 years now. 
Um, and so she is just very down to earth, very wonderful and very earth centric and very pagan. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm also a big science fiction fantasy fan. My boyfriend who I live with, um, is a fantasy author, Stephen Bruce. Uh, and, uh, he's been supporting himself as an author for over 30 years. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's part of my blood and it's, it's, and being with creative people so it, it's almost like you know when you watch her on youtube it's like it's like you're talking to a friend just like i'm talking to you right now morgane that you know it and she's just really great at demonstrating so i recommend her super highly and the other one um a uh, wire wrapper by the name of Oxana. That's O X A N A, and uh, I believe her YouTube channel is like Oxana Cra Crafts, and it might have like some numbers after it because she was doing this just for for uh, for fun for over a decade, and she worked a day job, and um, you know would show people this is this is how I make my things and. And, uh, but she recently has became, become a full-time artist as well, um, just doing her wire wrapping. But she's a master of um, wrapping cabochons and uh, you, anything from very simple to very complex. So those are the two people, if you're interested in learning more about wire wrapping, um, and I'll put this out there, if anybody's interested, where do I get my stones? Um, I've got the huge stash that I, of course, had purchased for Jane to do wire wrapping with. So I've got thousands of stones. I'm still going through, um, but I'm starting to buy my own stones at gem, gem shows and whatnot. And then, you know, finding referrals for where to get cabochons at good prices to wrap. Um, but the wire I get from RioGrande.com and I work in bare copper wire. I'm just gonna go into this technical stuff just in case somebody wants to know. Uh, all these smaller ones are wrapped with what's called 22 gauge wire. Um, and it's pretty easy to work with and very forgiving. You want to get something that's called dead soft. And if you get into this, you're gonna learn things you never thought you'd need to learn and yes there are different types of flyers you have to use and um uh the other place that i also recommend for getting wire if you really get into it and want to buy in bulk you can just get smaller versions off of Amazon too just to try out or at your local craft store um but i do recommend a particular brand called Parawire. It has a bunch of different colors that are available that are enameled and like these silver ones here and the one I'm wearing here, it's actually silver plated copper. Working with silver itself is really expensive. <laughs> it's way more, copper is cheap and this is only slightly more expensive than the copper and they also put a enameled coating on it and I wear this constantly um and you know i probably wear it two or three times a week and i haven't noticed that anything's rubbing off we'll see how it looks in two or three years um but yvonne williams works with it and she works with parawire almost exclusively and she absolutely loves them and she's like I, i'm not a paid sponsor i just love their stuff and um so it's really good quality really consistent they have great customer service uh if you if you buy from their site you're probably going to be buying the larger quantities um, but otherwise you can search for parawire on amazon or uh, some local craft stores will, will carry it as well <clears throat> so that's that technical note um inspiration for painting what got me back into painting i owe that all to stephanie puman law who um I actually met in my days as a fantasy artist and she did the most beautiful watercolor paintings. Like I said, I was an oil painter at the time. We were at Gen Con, which was a gaming convention in Wisconsin and she had, and they had what's called a, an art show area with an artist row. And so artists could set 
rent a table and sell their stuff there. And as a fantasy artist, you know, it's a great place where you can meet the different publishers and, and try and connect with them and, you know, try and get illustration gigs, but also to um, see all the other artists who are working in the, in the, in the gaming and fantasy field. And she had the table across from me and I'd never heard of her before. And I saw her artwork and I'm like, where did she come from? Because she had her own unique style and I absolutely adore her work. And I also have her tarot and her tarot, um, the Shadowscapes tarot. Um, and so I got to know her and she's a wonderful, wonderful person. And she, she also is a dancer dances fl flamenco and so you can sort of see some of that influence in how 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 her her characters are posed and things like that so um uh so it's it's all about you know finding inspiration where you can and it was starting to get a couple of her books on how to paint that got me started and if you don't mind, if I jump away, I can go grab a, a book which features her artwork. Okay. So I'm gonna... I am going to grab a book that features her artwork. Come on, Beth. Oh, well. Sorry. Couldn't find it quick enough. Oh. So, okay. You're up shadowscapes.com. And she has a ton of artwork, really beautiful, really mystical, uh, sort of fantasy. And she just, and if you've ever seen the Shadowscapes Tarot, that's her artwork. And it's a wonderful, wonderful, um, fairy friendly, not, not completely fairy, but it's, it's more like her interpretation of things. Um, and it was really interesting to find out. I, I don't know what the term is, but she's one of the people who um, she doesn't visualize things in her head. She doesn't see pictures in her head. That's not how her memory works. That's not how anything works for her. Her brain doesn't work that way. So when she's drawing and painting, she's not creating from an idea in her head. And yet they're super imaginative. I, I don't, she just looks decides i want to paint you know a fox blah 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 and so she'll start drawing and you know it's like what how can you <laughs> well, is she more intuitively yeah is that what she yeah it's, it's, but you know like i have dreams that are super visual and i'm a fairy seer i see them in my head i see my guides in my head you know and that's how a lot of people work but she's one of those people who doesn't see pictures in her head i you know some some mornings i i wake up and i'm like my goodness that could have been a blockbuster film that was so intense you know <laughs> the dreams that i have but uh she's she's not like that that's not the way her brain works and yet she's an artist so it takes and what was her name again? uh stephanie pooman law um, Poo is spelled P-U-I-M-U-N and L-A-W for law, or sometimes she just goes by Stephanie Law. She's of um, uh, uh, Chinese heritage. But, uh, okay. yeah. So, and uh, so, so I learned a lot about watercolors from her. She also has a YouTube channel where she's demonstrated uh, watercolor paintings and techniques. And um, I've, I still look back at those when I'm tackling a new painting because every new painting is like, oh my gosh, the blanks, a bl nothing scarier than a blank page <laughs> for writers and for I'm a writer, so I, I yeah. get that. Yeah. So um, that Audrey mentioned that she uses a magnifying page to observe the cards more closely. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah, because she 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 paints 
so detailed she, it, that you know her her originals form were probably only about this big but they're so detailed um with the shadowscapes tarot that you know i wish they were like published in a jumbo size so you could see them um the book i was going to grab was actually um a book on the shadowscapes minor arcana so it's got you know full page size of of the artwork um and along with some additional sketches and stuff like that um it it, it didn't come with the this was a an additional book that was published by i think it was published by either it was published through her company or published by Llewellyn. Um, but um, yes, yeah, there's several books out there with her artwork um, and uh, she's definitely worth following on Instagram for sure. And um, she does gallery work and, and all kinds of wonderful things now as well. So, yeah. Oh, I see. Diane says my son uses the shadow scapes for and loves the Fae, and yeah, and he is also an artist. Yeah, very much so. It's it. It was wonderful and inspiring to start working with that deck and realize like this is where I want to go with my art. Um, my style isn't. Uh, we just use the same medium. Um, and uh but she's definitely a big inspiration to me and uh the fact that everybody has different challenges in life like like, like i said i have the arthritis i have the arthritis and i also have an essential tremor that has gotten worse with age and i now manage with medications um but uh yeah with if i didn't have the medications i couldn't be a wire wrapper <laughs> I couldn't do that detailed work on the paintings and, um, you know, yay medicine. So <laughs> there's that as well. So it looks like we're, we're getting close to the hour. Did anybody? Yeah, any um, if anybody has any questions, you can pop them in the chat for Beth. Okay. You see that? What's your number one piece of advice for someone who wants to be an artist Generally, not necessarily as a professional, but that too. Um, I would say my number one piece of advice is don't compare yourself to others. Because, And it's one of the hardest things to do because there's always going to be somebody who's better. Always going to be somebody who's more financially successful professionally or has a better reputation or you know has a huge following on instagram um so don't compare yourself to others and the other thing is connect with other artists they're your friends they can they can be your friends some of them can be you know complete jerks but there are some real gems <laughs> in there as well <laughs> i've met a few of them really <laughs> outstanding terrible jerky egotistical artists in my years i don't hang out with them i hang out with others who are amazing and and super inspirational and super passionate about what they do whether they have a day job or are doing it full time um the thing is the passion and and always find ways to renew that passion and that's by not comparing yourself to others and surround yourself with other people and other fields musicians like i said i live with a writer <laughs> and it's, that's great like it's the best creative people i love hearing about process i and that's why i love the youtube videos so yeah that's that's what i got for so advice is there anything is there anything you'd like to specifically mention before we end the interview? Before we wrap up, um, I am just so grateful to be able to talk to folks about what I do here. And I am just, you know, I love the Sisterhood of Avalon so much. And it's been a rough year, so I haven't been online very much in the aisle, but I am trying to get my feet back into the waters as it were 
but I use it in my practice and I, you know, it, it definitely is something that grounds and centers me in a, a really wonderful way. And um, Jenna knows it was in 2017 at Paganicon when I was wearing a wig because I was still finishing chemo and there was nothing going on except for on Sunday, you know, the, the, the con was shutting down, but the, uh, the sisterhood of Avalon had, uh, their party room still open and they still had tea and cookies. And I sat in there and I talked to people. And I'm like, I'm home. I just knew I was home. Yeah. So I, I had the same exact. Yeah. It's uh, mm -hmm. it's a wonderful. Organization. Yep. So okay. well, thank you. You. And I thank you so much for sitting down to chat with me tonight. It was and, fun. And so everybody go over to that's website and her Etsy shop. And um, um also you can follow me oh. on social media. <laughs> at Benson Art on Instagram at Beth Hansen Art and that has my art and my readings and then because I'm a Gemini I have another Instagram account I started just for the wire wrap jewelry and that is at Harmony Goddess Jewelry okay so those those are the places that you can follow me and then I've got a Facebook page and I also have a Facebook group if you want to get in on that um, you can sign up for my newsletter on my website. I usually send out an email once or twice a month, depending on what's coming up. I've got wonderful things coming up April 30th. Um, the IMPLS.com, go there to sign up for my class. If you're in Minnesota and you want to be in the uh, gateway to fairy class, uh, and then, um, yeah, I'll be at Paganicon again this year. Um, there taking you know pandemic very seriously we do have to all you know get tested you know within 72 hours of the convention we'll all be wearing masks but i'm gonna have tables in the in the art show and i'm gonna have five pieces hanging in the gallery space yeah. but i'll also be selling my stuff directly in the art tables so and that's coming up in uh march march 18th through the 20th so that's what I got going on. Sounds great to me. So thank you so much. And thank everyone for joining us this evening. Um, our next court live is on Friday, March 4th. And I'll be chatting with Tracy Andrick of One Path Labyrinth. So again, thank you and have a nice night. Good night.